Hi, this is Alcan. Welcome back to my channel. Um, tonight we're going to be discussing about 51 years of the Taylor Law. Uh, this is a law that's part of the state of New York. It's a labor law that um, restricts uh, employees' rights. Um, it also prevents strikes, which hasn't happened yet, and job actions, also which hasn't happened yet, and other knickknacks and problems with this thing. What we're going to start is with this. People don't realize for 51 years, uh, the employees of New York City Transit has been undermined by this law. Yes, we're not talking about the three strikes. Um, we're talking about basically uh, we're not benefiting from the same benefits that the railroads, like Metro North Long Railroad, uh, benefit run, they get extra pay and extra benefits and so on. And we get the short end of the stick. But that's not the only problem with this law. I mean, this law was uh, was made, you know, to keep police, fire, the teachers, the sanitation, all these other civil servants from going on strike and through collecting bargaining and other stuff. Unfortunately, the difference between transit and all these other unions is before this tail law, this used to be a railroad, a subway system. A railroad. Unfortunately, once the Taylor took an effect, we lost FRA protections and we lost other stuff. You know, we can't go 20 hour pension anymore and all like that. Now you say, well, what's the big deal? Well, yeah, you're saving money in one hand, but at the same time, you're not benefiting. From the tail law, in other words, like improved service, you're not really benefiting from it because whatever money they saved to to the employees getting screwed out of, uh, I don't know how much of it went back into the system, to be honest with you. And then you ended up with some bull and projects that uh, that flopped pretty badly. Well, we'll give you an example. The Second Army Subway that ran over budget. Some of that money that they, it, it, they had saved it, they could have used it to upgrade some of the single system. They didn't. Um, other places where this law has come back to bite is on the safety front. For example, um, the 14th Street Union disaster. Um, People are saying, well, we should have had a random drug testing before this happened. Well, you almost did. Problem was, because the subway system is not under FRA anymore, when the legislation passed after the gun uh, powder accident in, I'm not sure where it's in Chevy Chase, Maryland, uh, everybody in the metropolitan area of New York City got it except New York City transit authority because we're not a railroad we're not under FRA we didn't get it and don't know why that happened and it's not because of the union because you have powerful unions uh, on the commuter lines path all these other systems and the freight system they, they couldn't defeat the law they still got the rent and drug testing so it's not the union something didn't go right with management at this agency to add the subway system to that law. It was only added after the 14th Street Union Square disaster when they rewrote it. It should have been put in in the first place, but they didn't. This is one of the problems with the tail law. It undermines safety. They say, well, it's not true, but yes, it is. Because you're going to remember, FRA standards are stricter than standards under the tail law. Your subway cars were stronger on their FRA than your tail law. So, when you have pictures of the R44 derailment at 135th Street, not the one at 125th Street, 35th Street, and all you see is the cab car part of the uh, train and the rest of the car is missing, that was built to weaker standards. That's why that train car failed. Just like the R42 on the Williamsburg Bridge, that was built under 
tr transit and not in the as far as standards that car came apart in an accident it telescoped and went on top of the other car the other car was the last one built on the FRA the R40 modified that car stayed almost intact just the corner was damaged but this car psh, went on top and by the way that same problem with Washington DC's first generation cars uh, one thing about transit in Washington Metro, it seems like they had the same laws, same problems, and they both got chastised by the uh, National Transportation Safety Board, which, by the way, happened in 1995. Also, oh, another thing is the signal system. From six, 1967 all the way up to, um, let's say, 2018, the railroads, commuter lines had multiple upgrades on the signal system from ATC and ATO all the way up to PTC, positive train control. How many upgrades have we had in the subway system between that time period? One, CBTC. Now, unfortunately, two lines and the first one was a complete failure and they say oh no that was a great success no it was a great success you wouldn't be shutting down the airline in April 2019 for two years to repair damage to Sandy because when you guys did the tunnel put the equipment in you didn't upgrade the tunnel to make sure it would survive a storm like Super Storm Sandy you didn't do that you did it for the seven line, but you didn't do it for that line. It's just uh, one of these things. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you, but this is like, like I said, early broadcast, I said about Lawrence Ruder. He might be a nice guy, but, you know, he's always looking for that soft spot to Put the Jagger in the back of your back. And this is, has to be one of his biggest failures. Not securing that tunnel. So all that money for that CBTC equipment and stuff went down the drain. Because now everything has to be ripped out for the next two years. And replaced with new equipment. And upgrade the tunnel so it will not be subject to another incident like Super Storm Sandy. That means loss of money for you too. So, without further ado, this is Alcan saying so long for now and don't forget to stop. Good night.